This is Bill Bow, and this is Slow TV Radio from the Meeting Point, broadcasting not only to Bill Bow but throughout the world. Hello, and welcome back to Round the Table, episode 27. Hello, Usa. Hello, good morning, Richard. Good morning. And shall we begin with some news? So, we've started all of the groups now, and we've got a lot of new people. Very good. Um, I've got quite a few new people. We've got a new group started on Friday, which is good news. Only a couple of people have not returned from last year, but they have good reason to. Yeah, and but then, they're still there, aren't they? They're still there, and they're probably listening to this podcast right now. <laughs> and they're going to return anyway. So... All things are improving down at the meeting point. And you've got more people in your groups as well mm-hmm. in the morning, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, so that's more for the retired people who are beginning their English studies, yeah? Mm-hmm. So they're probably not listening to this podcast. I don't think so. No, no. no. <laughs> but if anyone out there knows anybody who wants to begin with English and do the very basic things, because it's all about going to restaurants and hotels and yeah stuff. it's the basics like the day-to-day conversation yeah. so but we are start from zero just to get a solid basis yeah for people who want to travel and <laughs> buy tickets and yeah. ask questions in yeah. shops and things like that yeah yeah, yeah. Good stuff. And you've got lots of new people as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, nice people. Too. Yeah, we're doing very well this year. Um, so all the groups have started. And as from now on, the podcast will be following the plan of the book. So today's first lesson, we'll be talking about future because that's been the topic of the groups this week. So for the next 12 weeks, we'll be following the book. Um, other news. Um Reading is going to start again, isn't it? Yes. We're going to start this book club or reading club. We've tried doing a book club in the past, but to be honest, a lot of books are actually quite complicated for people to read. Yeah, it's, it's difficult to read a book in English. So I'm thinking what we'll do is find smaller things to read. So I want to start with An Inspector Calls. That's a play, isn't it? It is, a play by J.B. Priestley. And I'm thinking, if it's a play, it's more dialogue-based. So one thing is, it's going to be more useful language for people to practice. Yeah. And also, it won't go through all those big descriptive narratives that you get in some some books, where it's a whole page describing the scene. Yeah. And you tend to get a lot of excessive vocabulary, which might not be very useful for a lot of people to learn. Mm. So if it's a play which is basically dialogue, mm. I think it, for one thing it will be easier and also more useful for people. And it's going to be shorter and much quicker to read. Yeah. It's quite good as well. I, I quite like it. Well, I like it because it raises a lot of issues that are... So when we have a conversation about it, we don't have to discuss the actual play, but some of the issues that, yeah. are, that come from the play. Yeah, that's the good thing about... Uh, discussing a, a book that you can talk about lots of different things. Yeah, yeah, because issues and, and topics arise in the book, so the conversation doesn't have to be directly about the language or the characters in the book. They're just the the, the source of the conversation, the, the springboard, as we might say. Mm-hmm. Springboard for the conversation. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a plan, and we've got another couple of short stories in the pipeline. We can use the in the pipeline (laughs) phrase, meaning work in progress that's Mm -hmm. going to be happening soon. And but we'll talk about that more in the future, in the next couple of weeks, because we're going to be doing reading as the topic in the third unit of the book. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll discuss that a bit more in the future. Okay. The other thing that people might have noticed that the um, during the opening sequence there is we've got a new image builder on the computer so we've been playing with that 
It's um, not always obedient. It does produce some wonderful images, but not always what you want to <laughs> have. It's kind of got a mind of its own. It's very artistic, you see. So it's got an artistic temperament. Oh, maybe that's what it is then. <laughs> yeah. You tell it to do something and it, it does a wonderful image, but it's not what you wanted to have. <laughs> but it's quite interesting. I'm trying to work out how it works because one of the things I did the the image that came up at the beginning of the meeting point i actually gave it the photograph i loaded the photograph in and said can you change this photograph into a a woodcut illustration mm -hmm. a woodcut is a a printing method and a style of illustration and it, it creates an image but it's not based on the photograph and it seems to me it's almost like there are two parts to the computer one part is looking at the photograph and then describing it to the other part because it's got all the elements of the photograph but it's not copied from the photograph. Mm. So for instance, it's got a window and outside the window you can see a church yeah. in the distance and the sunlight shining on the church. But it's almost like a, a Chinese whispers thing. So someone's describing the photograph to another person. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And it's got the, got the red chairs. Hmm. And it's got um, an item of furniture against the wall with some books. And there are some pictures on the wall. So it's got all the elements, but it's not taken directly from the photograph. It's, a, hmm. it's very interesting. It's very effective, but not necessarily what I wanted. But it's, it's doing lots of very good illustrations, though. Yeah, I've got some brilliant illustrations for the new project. Those of you that know the round the table book that we use will know that at the back there's a section called Learn These Words. And there's a whole load of words there that everyone mispronounces. Like blood and flood rhyme with mud. A lot of people think it must be blued because it's like food. Mm. But it's not like food, it's like mud. So there's a section called learn these words and what I'm doing is I'm getting the computer to generate images to help illustrate the pronunciation. And I'm doing, uh, it's going to be quite a long video eventually, but what I'll do is I'll give you installments of it during the Round the Table podcast. So you'll probably get the first one sixth of it. I'm not sure how much of it I'll put in here. What do you see? But maybe I should just do that now. Yeah. So let's have the first part of Learn These Words. So welcome to the first installment of Learn These Words. And as I've just said, the word flood rhymes with mud. And so does blood. Flood, blood, both rhyme with mud. Unfortunately, my computer image generator refused to make an image with a flood of blood. So we've got a flood of mud there. Flood, blood, rhyme with mud. Here we have great, which rhymes with plate. Great plate. So great is not greet, okay? It's great. Here's another one. Break and steak rhyme with cake. Break and steak rhyme with cake. Remember this is steak, not stick. It's steak, the same as cake. Break, steak, cake. Heart rhymes with art. Heart, heart. Comfortable, vegetables, and chocolate have lost their middle syllable at least for most people. So comfortable, comf-t-bull. You see the O-R in the middle isn't sounding. Comfortable, vegetables, 
chocolate. Comfortable vegetables and chocolate. There's a man there sitting on a comfortable vegetable armchair eating chocolate. Comfortable vegetables, chocolate. Minute. Rhymes with in it. It's the only thing I could find to rhyme with minute. So here's a man repairing a clock and he is very small and he is in it. Changing the minute. Minute in it. Since. Rhymes with prince. So since is not science, okay? It's since. And there's the prince image that the computer generated. Obviously, the computer thinks all princes look like the princes in Disney movies. That's not like any prince I've seen in real life, but perhaps it's just as well. We don't want to see a realistic prince. Mind sounds like mind. Mind and mind are exactly the same. So don't say mind, okay? It's mind. And find sounds like find. A fantastic illustration there created by the machine. Find, find. And so do kind and blind. So all four of these, mind, find, kind, blind, they all follow the same pattern. And a child is not chilled. So child, don't forget the plural is children. So the plural is more like chilled, but chilled is when you keep something in the fridge. So it's nice and cold like this beer. You often have beer that is best served chilled. But one child, two children. So child, not chilled. Busy. Rhymes with dizzy. So this man is very busy and dizzy. Business has two syllables and they both sound like the letter I. Biz -ness. Okay, the middle syllable doesn't do anything. Business. As does women. Business, women. You see that all those vowels sound like I's. Business, women. Okay, I think that's enough of learn these words for one week. Let's get back to the discussion. Yeah, so should we begin with the topic? The topic for this week, with the lovely graphic image, the topic of the week is the future. So, the future. Well, there are so many things to talk about the future. Well, it's a big topic, yeah. Yeah. Are you talking about the near future or the future future? <laughs> the distant future. The distant future. Yeah, or the not too distant future. Um, well, we didn't really specify. We were talking about when things are likely to happen. Mm. So we covered lots of topics. We were discussing medicine, life expectancy, population. Um, we spent a lot of time talking about transport and housing and energy, that mm. kind of thing. Yeah. So, medicine then? Yeah, of course. We have certain people in the meeting point that have expertise. We always have people with expertise. Mm -hmm. And um, so we were discussing uh, in the Tuesday group, uh, medical advances. Um, some of them are a bit further off than we would imagine. Mm. Apparently it's very difficult to make an artificial heart. Mm. I thought maybe technology would be making artificial hearts. But no, they can make certain elements. So valves, 
can be made and inserted into a heart if the valve in a heart isn't working properly. I guess a heart is a very complex organ. I guess it is, yeah. And also they can do the, the, the pacemaker, which is not a new piece of technology at all. Mm. A little electronic device that gives a little electrical pulse to make your heart beat more regularly. Mm. They've been around for a long time, haven't yeah. they? Yeah, my grandfather had one. Mm. So. Yeah, yeah, they're quite common these days. I know quite a lot of people have them. Mm. So there's elements that they can insert, but they can't really build a heart. And the, the transplants from pigs, apparently that's not going to happen. It's, I thought it was something that was, you know, on the verge of happening and becoming common, but apparently it doesn't work very well. Oh, why so not? Like, just rejection. Ah, they, don't, okay. they don't stay there for. Yeah. They, they get rejected by the human yeah. body. So there's a few medical things that probably aren't going to happen, as we might have seen in the science fiction films. <laughs> um, transport. We're all quite unanimous. I think that the autonomous vehicles will become more common in the future mm. they have certain advantages yeah i think this is going to be important because it's very difficult to find lorry drivers these days mm -hmm. in europe in general so i wonder if they are going to do something about that with yeah i think i think that could be that could be one of the first ones to go yeah fully automated lorries for transporting goods around the country because then they could drive all night long and things they like that they don't need to rest mm. they don't need to go in and have a big fried breakfast <laughs> 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 yeah and we were also talking the likelihood of um, personal transport whether everyone will have a car or whether it will be more community based oh, yeah. like the bicycles you get in the street where you can just pick up a bicycle and yeah. leave it somewhere and if we have self-driving vehicles whether it would just be maybe not the full size of a car because most of the time it's just one person that needs to be moved so we presume that it would be something you could just call up like a uber yeah. you could just call it up on your phone and a little pod thing would come and you jump in and it would take you home and then it would go off to the next person yeah that seems quite likely in the not too distant future not beyond the realms of possibility <laughs> there's an interesting <laughs> phrase not beyond the realms of possibility and then we were talking about how people will live because we were looking at some of the things that have happened already if you look at the very modern designs in Saudi Arabia, countries like that, mm. where it's very, very hot. So you've got these completely enclosed air conditioned environments. Mm. So nobody needs to go out into the street. Mm. And also in Canada, I've seen in Canada, in, in Vancouver or somewhere, where someone's in a, in a building and they want to cross the road to go to another building, there's like these walkways that go over the roads and they're all enclosed so you oh. never actually have to go out oh. you can go from one building to another without actually going out into the the cold air outside oh. and i think that kind of idea of having completely enclosed environments because i saw another one which i think was in russia and it's one of the biggest blocks of flats and there's like twenty thousand people live in this area and they've got the supermarket and everything, and I suppose gymnasiums and bars and whatever, all in one building. Mm. So in theory, you never need to leave the building. Yeah. Well, if you can work from home, which is going to be more common in the future. So I think that kind of way of living, and also, I'm um, sorry, but tying it in with another idea, <laughs> in Japan, there's like this tourist resort and it's like going to the beach but mm. it's nowhere near the coast yeah and they've created a huge beach with a sea or basically it's a big swimming pool that's like the sea because they've got a machine to make the waves and you can go to this beach basically and mm. you're nowhere near the coast and if the weather changes and it's a bad weather they just put the the top over it ah. like in a big football stadium now they yeah. close the top in so if you could imagine that idea of 
everyone living in an enclosed block where all the bars and the supermarket and everything is within the same complex. Oh. Then you could have the park as well. Imagine a football stadium, yeah. but instead of a football pitch, like loads of trees and fountains and ponds and places to walk. And you could have all the bars and that around the outside. Hmm. So I think in the future, especially if air quality is a problem, yeah. it would everything would be enclosed and you would never really need to go outside. Oh, that sounds... I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't like the sound of it. Yeah, but that's because we don't live in the future. Yeah. But lo lots of things become normalised, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Bit by bit. Yeah, yeah. And you think now, there's the shopping mall. If you go over, uh, what's it called, Zubiarte or yeah, something, yeah? Yeah, yeah? You know, you've got the, the, the central part. You can sit around in the middle talking to people. I don't think there are any trees growing in the middle, but I think there's glass on the top in some yeah. of it. There's a little glass pyramid or something. Maybe, yeah. And you've got all the shops and the, you know, McDonald's and everything around the outside. Mm. Just imagine that, but spread out. So the central part is more like a park. Yeah, yeah. Just make it wider. Yeah. And, well, uh, that's why I don't like the sound of it, because I don't like going to those places. No, you don't, but more and more people do. And for young people, it's quite a normal place <laughs> yeah, to go and yeah. hang out. Yeah. on a Saturday yeah. and in America they do it a lot they go to the yeah. shopping mall yeah, yeah. and they go there in a car yeah. they park the car underneath and they spend the day there yeah. and then they go home again in the evening yeah, yeah. so if your flat that you live in is in the same building mm. you just go downstairs meet all your friends in the but in that's, the bars that's and... it gonna be like really bad for our health like people won't walk at all will they well you'd have if to you just yeah. go downstairs and have yeah, but these. you have gymnasiums, the oh. same as people do now. People go to the gymnasium for exercise, you know, they have gymnasiums in there as well, in my fantasy world. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, yeah, I guess they have gymnasiums, yeah. Yeah, well. I, think, I think that's how it's going to be. Yeah. yeah, well, I think the idea of the 15 minutes uh, cities, yeah? Yeah, yeah. That's the idea, that everything is... Maybe to start with is open and then they close it. But if everything is within the 15 minutes, then mm. you don't have to move very far. Mm. And that's basically it. Well, lots of these shopping centres now are basically, they've taken over from the old-fashioned high street, but basically they've, they've created a street with a, with a cover over it, mm. haven't they? Yeah. And... It's just an extension of the same idea, really. Mm. You know, I think that I think that's the way people will live, and there'll be more technology and the smart TVs and all that kind of stuff for our entertainment. Mm -hmm. But we discussed all that artificial intelligence a few weeks back, didn't mm. we? So we won't need to cover. We don't need to cover that topic again. Um, what other changes? What else were we talking about? Well, what about the things that would change? Oh, yeah, that's something I forgot to discuss with people. Good point, yeah. We always talk about the future and we talk about all the different new things that we'll have. Yeah, but if you think about it, like, things, life in general, is going really fast, but we don't go that fast. We are still with our primitive brain. Yeah, yeah, this is true. This is true. Yeah, we forget that when we go into a new age, a lot of the old age comes with us. Mm. Like we never really left the Iron Age, did we? <laughs> no. Iron is still very important <laughs> for, for tools and things. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose there were lots of stone tools even after iron was invented. People were still using stone. Mm. We're still using stone. Yeah. Well, I suppose we are to a certain extent, yeah. Mm. So, yeah, lots of traditional things will continue. But, of course, there are lots of basic human instincts, mm. like the need to sit around and have conversations and things like that. Yeah, be part of a group. Or, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, these things are, are, are basic things that don't change because we as humans don't change. Mm. So we might just be doing it in a, in a different environment. Mm with new technologies there with us. Like we all have 
mobile phones, but we have them during our conversations and we talk about something and we say, oh, hang on, I'll, I'll find it on my phone. Yeah. But we're still having the conversation. We've just got this additional thing. Mm. It's not completely replaced conversation. We yeah. don't live in the world of WhatsApp, do we? No, but mind you, the conversations you have with your co-pilot, <laughs> if young people start having conversations with the... Oh, yeah. My yeah. Scenes, I don't know what it's going to be like for them because we know this. Now, sitting around the table. And yeah, yeah. But but, well, we will be having conversations with our computers in the future, yeah. As we were experimenting the other day, hmm. talking, we were going to do that, weren't we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot to do it. Yeah, we can have conversations with your phone now. Yeah. I think that will be more common in the future. I think that's going to be very common. Hmm. And your whole house will be basically, a, there'll be a voice in the house mm. and it will welcome you home and say, what do you want to do this evening? And you say, oh, I fancy a film. Mm. And it would say, what kind of film would you like to watch this <laughs> evening, Richard? <laughs> <laughs> because he's American. <laughs> yeah, they always talk about that. It's always a girl, isn't it? Always a girl's voice. You never get a man in the computer. <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah, it's a strange thing. Another thing, now this is a bit weird, but I've often thought this. You know when you see, um, usually once a year, you get a programme on TV and it's the latest technology and it's normally a technology show in Japan or something, mm -hmm. a, a technology fair. And they have a, a realistic robot mm -hmm. with a human face with, mm -hmm. with like a latex skin and it's got human mannerisms and that. Yeah. I always think it's very strange that the human-like face is always a young girl, isn't it? <laughs> they never make an old man well. <laughs> or even a man. It's just a young girl. And I think I wonder why that is. Is it because it's made by young men? <laughs> and I think, where's that going in the future? Hmm. But I think the, the majority of um, that kind of intelligence will just be... It won't, you won't have a robot at home as such, like an imitation person. No. It would just be in the living environment where you'll talk to your... Zumba. <laughs> Rumba. Yeah, okay, you mock me. Yes, what's it called? Rumba. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Those vacuum cleaner things, they're called Rumbas. They're not called Zumbas as I thought they were. That's my mistake. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think that's where the technology will go in the future. We'll have more technology. I don't think we'll have robot people walking around, really. No. We might have people with bits that have been replaced by robotics. Like if you lose an arm, for example, mm. they might be able to replace it. Yeah. That would be interesting, yeah. Anyway, going back to the things that won't change, apart from sitting around a table and having a conversation. Do you think, is, is there anything else? Well, we'll, we'll still eat. We'll still need and entertainment. Go to restaurants. We'll still yeah. laugh at things. We'll have jokes and things. Yeah. Well, we? talking about jokes. Well, what, talking about <laughs> jokes? Oh yeah, I was, gonna, I was gonna ask you a question, wasn't I? Yeah, so um, why do you think it is? Why do people in Britain say lift and People in America say elevator. Oh, why? Because we are raised differently. <laughs> <laughs> that is a play on words. Maybe we'll have to discuss humour in the future. <laughs> Basically, to be raised, yeah, you can have raised as in moved to a higher position vertically <laughs> or you can talk about being raised like when you raise your children mm -hmm. that's mm. that's what the joke is so why do british people say lift and americans say elevator because we are raised differently <laughs> i think it's a great joke i was quite pleased when i learned that one this week <laughs> very good okay so i think that's all we've got time for this week Ustara. we'll have to get off now and uh, I've got to do some editing and I suppose you're going to a gymnasium or something like that <laughs> to do your things 
And next week we will be discussing... Sleep. Sleep. That's the topic for next week. Yes, sleep. <laughs> right, we must go. Um, See you next week. Yeah. Have a nice week. That's, I say that. Okay, you say that. <laughs> Have a good week. Till next week. Bye. Bye. Ha, <laughs> 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 <laughs>